Welcome to Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. A place to connect, to grow, and to cultivate your faith in Christ. Together, we'll learn how to stand in victory each and every day. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke. Thanks so much for joining us today. You know, we have a great topic today, but before we get started, I'd just like to invite you to visit our website, victorylifeministries.org. We have so many different books available. You know, the Lord's had us write books for years without any ministry, without anyone to to give it to or send it to or sell it to or whatever. And the Lord just kept saying, just keep writing, keep writing. We had no idea we'd be sitting here years ago. And so we want to encourage you to go. And one of the books that we really think is really important and almost foundational is to know that God's not mad at you. And that's the title of this book. And this just goes on to the complete grace message and how we're, we're, uh, we're loved by God no matter what. And he's not judging us for our sins anymore. I mean, it's such a simple message and it's really foundational. So I encourage you to get your copy today at victorylifeministries.org. We also have a YouTube channel. We really would love you to subscribe. It would help us, but it will also help you because you'll be receiving two teachings a week from our ministry. And if you like this and what you've been hearing, you'll like that too. And it'll help you grow. We are, we are, the calling that we have on our lives is just to mature the body of Christ, Mm -hmm. you know, and we're still maturing. We haven't arrived, but we're not, we did leave (laughs) and we left a long time ago and we are just building and building and building and going from glory to glory and just receiving so much information and so much revelation is just awesome. So when you, you could do the same thing too. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and you won't be disappointed. Amen. And today, Al, we are going to talk about how we can recognize a false False prophet. prophet. Because there is such a thing as false prophets. It's not only in the Old Testament. It's not only in the New Testament. It's in today, life today. And we're going to talk about how we can do it. You know, before we begin, I just want to say one thing about what we said on the other show. Mm-hmm. Never accept a prophecy from a prophet that is something God has not already told you. That's it is good. so important that God has spoken to you and you know what he wants. And it could be a simple thing like just stay on this job, stay working where you're working. But if someone, if, if you're working somewhere and you feel in your heart you're supposed to stay there and someone comes up to you and prophesies that you're supposed to go to China, don't go running off anywhere. Make sure it you know inside you it's right. Just right. want to say that to anyone because we've been talking about prophecy. So go ahead. Yeah. So first of all, we're going to go the definition of a prophet. Okay. This is according to 1 Corinthians 14, 3. It's a person who speaks by divine inspiration or as the interpreter through whom the will of God is expressed. Look at it. Look at it. What it says here in 1 Corinthians. But when someone prophesies, he speaks to encourage people to build them up and to bring them comfort. And it's still a word from the Lord. So it really involves hearing from God and speaking what you hear in order in order to encourage and exhort and bring comfort to others. There's a reason why God has prophets in the land, and that's what their job is to do. Yeah, the prophet's job is really to build you up and to help you out and to speak well to you, speak well over your life, not sit there and point their finger at how you're so bad. Now, not always so in the Old Testament. You know, in the Old Testament, a lot of the prophets warned the people they needed to change their ways. And if they didn't change their ways, what would happen to them? But one of the things you got to understand, we operate in the New Testament. The New Covenant, that's right. So we're under the New Covenant. We're not under the Old Covenant. Most Christians are bouncing back and forth and they get confused because we're in the New Testament. God's not made at you. And all of a sudden, they jump in the Old Testament, and God is mad at you. I'm only kidding. But um, the point I'm saying is you've got to be on it. you got to know where you are in the dispensation of time, and we are in the New Testament. We hear prophets today who are hearing from God as far as what's going on in the world, and their words should be positive and create hope in the believer. But yes, there are 
things going on in the world that aren't very good. Well, what are you saying is sometimes, sometimes if a prophet uh, prophesies something not so good coming, it could actually be God preparing you or warning, or warning you because he does warn his people of things too. Right. So we could speak against it and protect our families and whatever that might be. Right. So, right. but mostly they bring comfort and they should. Well, sometimes though, like if someone's going to, a prophecy or should be edifying, yes. it should build you up. Yes. You know, I knew this one lady was a prophetess who spoke words over someone. You, this was awful. Yeah. She was a drug, she was whacked out on drugs. Uh, and, years ago, this girl was whacked out on drugs. And, and, and she was she a mess, been, and she turned to the Lord. Been uh, delivered, The whole family, family turned. She hasn't done drugs in years. She was totally delivered. Nice family, like you say. She had passed her. And this prophet walked up to her and said, she, this it's a, was a woman, prophet who said, you're going to go back on drugs. That wow. is not a prophecy from God. God doesn't want you to go back on drugs. He's not telling you to go back. He's not leading you to go back. This, to me, is a false prophet or right. even a false prophecy. You could say both. She And, and she, what she did was she rejected that prophecy, and which was good. She spoke against it, rejected it, and it never happened. And you know, And happened. you know what that caused? You know what was really sad about this whole thing? It caused a dissension between that woman and the church where she had been going for years and years. And they never had her back because it wasn't that they took a personal. It was just that it was not a good prophecy. It brought fear. It, you know, it could have brought fear, but this girl wasn't afraid because she knew she was delivered. She was secure in her faith. She knew it, but she, and she, and it, and it never happened. You know, a false prophet is anyone who brings another message other than what the Bible says. And I'm going to give you an example of this. Um, there was a prophet who is, um, I don't know how well known he is, but he is on some television programs. I haven't seen him lately, I have to say. But he uh, was on someone's show, I forget, I forget what, maybe Sid Roth or something. <clears throat> And, and, and he was on there a lot, and he was prophesying about the end times or whatever, whatever he was prophesying about. But anyway, he came to a local church around where um, a friend of mine lives, and so they went to see him. And my girlfriend took this woman, who's also a good Christian, and um, they were sitting there, and the man said to the congregation, he said, okay, I just want to tell you that God is going to give you, if you want to go after God. Right. A hundred percent. If you want to do that, okay, and you're really out to please God and whatever, he's going to give you a physical ailment if you have a desire to go deeper with him. And he told the people to expect that because after all, he wants, he wants to see if you really mean it regardless of what's going on in your life, if you really mean it. Okay, you're pushing after me? Well, let's see. How hard are you going to push? Let's see. I'm going to give you this. This is what he's telling these people in this congregation. Now, the woman that went with my friend had, she's been fighting a cancerous thing on her face. It's a mole on her face, but it's cancer. And she's been fighting it, and it's been kind of growing and growing. So here she goes to church to hear her prophet, probably wants some encouragement, wants some motivation, right? And she hears this. She hears this. If you want to go deeper with God, he's going to give you a physical ailment. And she went like this. <gasps> and she went like this, and she covered it. And she said, this is why I have this. Because I want to go deeper with God, and he's given me this to go deeper with him. And she honestly, already had that. Honestly, yeah, but she always she wanted She already got to, another one. Yeah, That's she always, really what he said. Yeah, but she always wanted to go further with the Lord. That, to me, is a false prophet. It could be just, you might say, he. well, he might be right in other things. Well, maybe, but... But that is false because he's totally preaching against what the word of God says. It's a complete lie. You know, you got to remember something, though, about people. We are people. And this man is human. Yes, yeah. he has the Holy Ghost in him. But let me just tell you something. Prophets, many times, if they're not in the seat of a prophet, 
and they just prophesy. A seed of the prophet is, I've called you to be a prophet, and that's it. You're going to be a prophet. But but when you're in the seat of the prophet, like some people you'll see on TV, that's different. But this man was not in the seat of a prophet, I don't believe. He was just prophesying. And here's what happened. He was speaking through his own filter. And this is why. This man, unfortunately, and it's very, very sad, he lost his little girl years prior. And he really thought that God took her. Okay? Because why? At that time in his life, he was pressing on toward God more than ever. What really happened was the devil took the child because he was pressing on. You've got to remember, we are all human, and we're working through our own filters, okay, which you probably don't even think of. Unfortunately, this man, this prophet, I will call him, lost his little girl years prior and probably thought that God took her. Because at that time in his life, he was pressing after God. But let me just tell you this. God didn't take her. The devil took that kid because right. he was pressing toward God. Exactly. Okay, the devil killed her. But because of this belief, he sees that God wants to do these things to us. Because, Al, he, people try to justify what happens in their life. And they have to say God had something to do with mm -hmm. this. And so his whole message to the body of Christ is wrong. It's false because that is not true. Now, I want to look at Acts 13, uh, starting with verse 4. Saul and Barnabas and their assistant Mark were directed by the Holy Spirit to go to Seleucia, and then they sailed to Cyprus, and I'm going to paraphrase this. From there, they crossed the island as, as far as Paphos, where they encountered a Jewish false prophet, a sorcerer named Elymas, who also went by the name of Son of Jesus. So a sorcerer really is like a, a wizard with, with magic powers. It, he, it doesn't really reveal what he did, but they called him a false prophet. And let's continue. He had gained influence as a spiritual advisor to the regional governor, uh, considered by many to be a wise and intelligent leader. So because of his magic or whatever, he gained influence with the governor. He obviously used this magic to entice him, okay? And it, the scripture says the governor was a wise and intelligent leader. So he wasn't, but he was seeking truth. This man was seeking truth, and he thought this man had it. And the King James Version calls this man a prudent man, someone who is mentally stable. So the governor was a mentally stable person searching for truth. So the governor requested a meeting now. He heard about Barnabas and Saul coming in because he wanted to hear the message of God's word. And here is the proof that this man was a false prophet. Look at what he did. But Elymas, I think I'm, re I'm saying it right, whose name means sorcerer, you wow. believe that? Stood up against Saul and Barnabas, stood up against the true prophets, and tried to prevent the governor from believing their message. Wow. Wow. He reacted violently. And when you react violently to something, there's something you're doing that you're trying to cover up. And, and this is what it looked like. So look at this in verse 9. It says, Saul, also known as Paul, stared into his eyes. Now, he was hearing from the Holy Spirit at the time. And he was waiting. He was considering what to say. He was listening. And he rebuked him. And it says, filled with the Holy Spirit, he said, you son of the devil. Wow. You are full of every form of fraud and deceit and an enemy of all that is right. When will you stop perverting the truth of God into lies? Now, again, you know, Al, I wish, I wish like the scriptures would have told us exactly what he was saying yeah, to yeah, the governor, but we have to trust what Paul said, you know, and that really he was obviously perverting the truth of God's word. And I don't know. I wish I knew. Well, that's the first sign of a false prophet. Yes. They're taking God's word and it's perverted. It's twisted around. It's not right. What about... Have you ever got, and I know you and I see this sometimes, many times you'll hear a message that's mixed and it's got a ton of truth in it. And then there's one sentence that's completely false. And it, it almost, people don't see it, Al, but it almost negates the truth. 
It's like you're saying two different things out of your mouth. Yeah. And then sometimes what it does is it actually gives credence to the little lie that's in there as being truth. It it's gets very so confusing. Funny. That You know, it's all good, good, good. And there's this one little sentence that's not right. And then you're believing the one that's not right because of everything else. It was right on the money. And and that Al, that one wrong thing that would be said, it seems that people, because like you always talk about the platform we have, it seems that people go with that one wrong thought and discard all the right. They go out with that one wrong thought. Why is that? Because we don't have a platform of God's not mad at you. God doesn't make you sick. He doesn't bring problems on you. That's not... When your platform is God can do whatever he wants to do, even if it's bad, and sometimes he says no to to healing you. And when you have a platform, a wrong platform, everything is just like this prophet had a, th through his own filter. He was teaching so many people this wrong doctrine. So look at this, Alec, verse 11. It says, at this very moment, the hand of God's judgment comes down upon you and you will be blind Wow. So blind, you won't even be able to see the light of the sun. As Paul spoke these words, the shadowy mist and darkness came over the sorcerer, leaving him blind and groping about, begging someone to lead him around by the hand. Wow. 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 You right. got to explain this a little bit, though, All to right. make it clear. This man was an unbeliever. You've got to understand that. And he was not part of the new covenant we talked about operating. And a covenant is, is, is an agreement. It's like a contract, only stronger. Because of this, he was still under the judgment of God. He was. Or he could easily come under the judgment. Even today, the unbelievers are under God's judgment. And God can do what he wants, but he can't do what he wants to the believer. But, you know, I don't think God is... Al, I don't believe God is very quick to do that. I believe God was trying to get the attention of this man for yeah. years. Yeah. And because his heart was hardened or sometimes willingly deceived, like you say, he couldn't get in. And he said, okay, I see this man not changing. And maybe that's why, you know. So but, as a result, he was judged. Yeah. Let's face it. So but God, he was an unbeliever. Remember that he was not a Christian. God in no way does this to those who believe. He doesn't do that Absolutely to the ones who you got to make a distinction between God's people and the rest of the world. Right. There's a difference there. <clears throat> and God's people are not necessarily perfect or doing it all right. Many times they make mistakes. Many times God's prophets make mistakes. Um but because we've received what Jesus did on the cross, our sins are gone. They're forgiven. So in this, for this reason, that's why judgment came upon this man. He didn't receive Jesus. He wasn't. But look at what. What, what happened to the governor? Let's read that. Okay. The governor witnessed this and he believed and was awestruck by the power of the message of the Lord. I mean, he saw what happened to this false prophet and he immediately believed in the message that Saul and Barnabas were bringing. Why? Why the, Why did that happen to this man? Why? Because he was a true seeker. Oh. Mm -hmm. That makes all the difference yes. in the world. The ones that truly are seeking God, or they have a heart for God, they don't really understand it, they don't really know, they're making mistakes, they will eventually get saved and born again because right. there's a heart going on, and God's always working with the heart for in everyone. That's exactly right. He, he, was, he was falling for the sorcerer's message until truth came. And, it, and when truth comes, it wipes out the lies. What is it wow, that you can just so see good. truth so easy? That's so good. You just see truth. That's Boom. so good. It's that simple. You know what I mean? Yes, so yes. So tell us some more. They, 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 you know, there's this girl I know, and she called for some help because she, she uh, befriended this couple from her church, befriended her, and they, they seemed to have wanted to take over her life and that they wanted to just teach her things and show her things and everything. And she didn't think anything of it at the beginning. Uh, and uh, they became friends, the four of them, the two couples, know, you know, know and they were just awesome. And, um, but as time went on, Al, she started feeling weird with them. They started saying, weird things, you know, something like, you know, your life is in our hands here and, we, you know, stupid things, getting really involved in the family situations. And he would prophesy a lot of things that were truthful about our family, but then he would say weird things that, so she started, her antennas went up and they said she was getting sucked in. And then she had them come to her house to bless the house or something. And he said something very 
weird in the home that I can't even repeat. And and she called me and she asked me. And uh, of course, I told her to separate herself from them, which she did. But you, she could get, you could get, you guys, you could get sucked into a false prophet. So you have to know the word of God. You have to know. And look at this. You can't afford to be deceived. Look at Matthew 24, 4. Jesus said, take heed that no one deceives you. Listen, you've got to make sure you're not deceived. For many, listen to this, many will come in my name, Jesus said, saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And Al, I love what you said about this scripture a long time ago, because I honestly don't, I have not met one person that came up to me and said, I'm Jesus. No offense, but that doesn't happen at all. It doesn't happen. What this is talking Tell about. Tell them what this means. It's amazing. <clears throat> It says, take heed, no one deceives you, for many will come in my name. So many people will come in the name of Christ, saying, Jesus is the Christ. He is the Lord. Right. And deceive you. Right. That's what that means. Right. And will deceive many. In other words, they're, they're going to... They're going to say, Jesus is the Christ, he's Lord, we're Christians, and then their theology will be so off kilter, or like the prophecies, like what you're talking, these things will be so wrong, your, your antennas go up. But that's what this scripture's talking about, because anybody who walks up to you and says, I'm Jesus, you just you just walk away, you know, it, it, it's, you're not going to, it'd be hard to deceive people doing that, I'm sure you could. But my point being is that's what the scripture means. They're going to come in the name of the Lord and deceive many. Right. Say, because Jesus said they're going to come saying I'm the Christ. Yeah. I mean, but but I thought the I meant them for so long. And no, it means that Jesus is the right. Christ. So there are many false prophets in the body of Christ. And uh, we got to we got to discern. And, you know, can I say one more thing? I don't know where it is. OK, but it says that. Uh, it says there are three prophet, three or more prophets, and the rest are to judge them. So we take that scripture, and I wish I had it here to go. We take that scripture to mean that we need to judge the prophets, just regular me and Al, okay? That's not true. What that says is there are three prophets in the seat of uh, it, it, there are three prophets or 10 prophets or 20 prophets that just prophesy. The Lord's telling me this about you. The Lord's telling me this. And the others, meaning the others in the seat of prophecy, are able to judge that. They are the ones that are supposed to judge, the ones that actually have the calling of a prophet on their life. There are, I think, 90% of the body of Christ that prophesies are not in the seat of a prophet. They just prophesy. Look, I get a word of knowledge for people. You get words of knowledge for people. You could call that prophesying. It should build the person up, as we said before, okay? But the seed of the prophet needs to judge those who are prophesying. That's what that means. We don't necessarily have the right to judge them. It's the other prophets judging the prophecy. Right. Not everybody. We anybody. do, though, have to have discernment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, we have to know that it sits right with us, but uh, we have to... Uh, just sit back and listen. And I'll tell you, I, with the with the world situation going on now, and there are a lot of prophets out there that are coming to the forefront, and there are some I'm with and some I'm not. And it's because of a discerning in my spirit. I don't trash the ones that I don't necessarily agree with. The ones that give a little bit of a fearful warning, I take that like, if that's true, I'm standing against that now in Jesus' name for what might happen in the future. So right. it is helpful to listen to them. But uh, in closing, of course, John 10, 10 is the thief, the thief, the thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. This is talking about false prophets preaching for their own benefit. Anything, Bring anybody's in. prophesying that has anything to do with steel, killing, or destroying, yep. it's not God. Yep. I had somebody prophesy over me in a service, and it was an awesome prophecy. I knew what he was talking about. He knew. But then when we left the building, he continued to prophesy. But unfortunately, it was in his flesh. And he started prophesying fear that would bring fear and worry and, and uh, just franticness to me. And I knew that was in the flesh and I went home and I rejected that part and that part never came to pass in my life. So you have to be careful. You have to know the word of God and you have to have discernment when people speak over you and don't let them lay hands on you just because they want to. 
Make sure it's okay and you have a good feeling in your spirit about it and then go to God with that prophecy and see, see if it's true or not if you don't know right off the bat. But anyway, we're out of time today. Thank you for joining us. Remember, victory is always yours through Jesus Christ and we'll see you next time. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the program today. Thanks so much for joining us. We have a book bundle package just for you. The first book is God's Not Mad at You. And Al, you're really, really you know, strong on this one, aren't you? When you get a revelation that God's not mad at you, in fact, he thinks you're the greatest, he's well pleased with you at all times, it frees you to be what God has called you to be in this life. And you can be a servant of the Most High God and be a blessing to others all around you. This is an important book and it's part of this great bundle. Absolutely. The second one we have is No More Regret, No More Fear. God told me a long time ago that my children live in the regrets of the past and the what ifs of the future. You know what? In, in light of how much God loves me, there's no time to have regret. That's right. God Al. is just, right. he's just moving on. That's it's exactly awesome. right. We shouldn't look back and we shouldn't fear the future. I'm not looking back. I'm just looking ahead for the good things that God has for me. That's right. And the last one is get rid of that anxiety with God right by your side. You do not have to fight anxiety by yourself, right? No, this is a great book and there's a lot of great information in here. It, it's just freeing and you'll just walk in peace. Yeah, and you'll this. learn and you'll learn to be free from it rather than just coping with anxiety. Right. There's no coping with God. You're free, and that's the way he made us through Jesus. Yes, and these go hand in hand, so please go to victorylifeministries.org and get your bundle today. Hi, I'm Pastor Scott Barreto of Palm City, Florida, and I'd like to introduce you to a new book by my pastor, Al Burke, Walking by Faith into prosperity. Let me tell you, this is a fantastic book. Not only that, it's like a living epistle of the consistent lifestyle of love and giving that Al and Angie Burke have walked in their entire life, what they believed in and how that produced abundance and blessing into their life. It's not a how-to book, more so about the mechanics of giving and the hundredfold return, but more covering every area of your life in things that you didn't even consider had to do with receiving blessing. This is so intense, it's a great study on the things of God, the principles of God, and having the right heart towards giving and receiving the blessing and living the blessed, abundant life Jesus died for you to have. Listen, go to victorylifeministries.org and get your copy today of Walking by Faith into Prosperity. God bless you. Victory Life Ministries was founded to help you connect, grow, and flourish in a relationship with Jesus. Al and Angie Burke are committed to teaching the body of Christ how to walk in strength, in boldness, in love. Connect with us online today at victorylifeministries.org. You'll find the encouragement, inspiration, and resources you need to stand in victory each and every day. Join in on a growing community of believers that are partnering to bring these messages all over the world. With your help, we can make a change. We can shift the atmosphere. Live your best life. Live an effective life full of faith, hope, and vision. Live life above your circumstance.